Hey you family welcome back to my channel yet another video and it's this time we're going to discuss about a university uh, medicine speci specifically uh, in London and disclaimer for the viewers uh, it's not going to be a budget friendly university the budget's going to go way above 30000 pounds a year apart from that 10 to 12000 pounds a year it's going to be living costs and eating so you can skip the video and only those who have the budget I will give a brief explanation about the university. I'm going to give a brief analysis how medicine is followed in this country, what kind of exams you need to go through, what are the future options, the accreditations, the ranking, everything all together in this video. So just sit and I hope this video will clear all your doubts for uh, the query related to medicine in UK. I think it's important to have strong passions when you're young because I think that shapes who you grow into. Like most kids, I did change my desired job a lot of times, but something that did stay all along was me being interested in sciences. What inspired me the most when I was younger was my family. It was not easy for me to leave India. But I think my mom really supported me through. She's one of the reasons why I'm here. As long as I can remember, I've wanted to do electronics and build robots. My brother told me that the best thing to do would be to go into electronic engineering. It was an easy choice, really, to come here and build the foundations of what I could then later on go and do. Please mind the gap. Brunel is a fantastic place to be inquisitive. It's great because it's a one-campus university, so everything is available to you. I think what made me feel at home is that there are so many international people here in Brunel. It's not only that I'm focusing on my professional life, I'm doing what I love to do. The biggest help in nurturing my curiosity has been the amazing academics. You're never afraid to ask a question. That practical aspect of being allowed to try and fail and just become a better person is just what I love about this place. Brunel has been part of the journey of growing. And you can build on that and you can learn from trial and error here what does and doesn't work and you can take it outside of Brunel and make it better. And you've got that easy connection into London but then you're still on the outskirts so it's nice that you can have space and actually move around and breathe. Brunel has given me the dedication to become a lawyer more and more each day. I'm more curious than ever. It has challenged me. I have a lot more freedom. I'm braver. I'm more knowledgeable. And I'm ready for the future. I, I am Brunel. Brunel. So let's introduce this university. The name is Brunel University. It's in the UK. It's a public university established in the year 1966. The university uh, is holding over 17,000 students in that, including 8,000 students are the international students. And apart from that, these all countries, like 151 country students are taking part in this institution, whether it's related for medicine or for engineering or MBA courses. And apart from that, 9% of this population that is around 1600 students they're Indian so you already know um, many students of India are choosing this university that means there's something uh, there is good settlement option in this place so we're going to discuss about it for university ranking and accreditation I don't need to speak a lot I'll just uh, put it on the screen you can see all the rankings all the accreditations that the university holds and from that you can understand how prestigious this university is so we already talked about some uh, few things, the ranking, the accreditation, it's not much of a data. The real important data that we're going to talk about is first thing is the curriculum of this university. So let's talk about the program. Uh, specifically, I'm going to talk about medical program in this. So the curriculum, it's the five year MBBS program. It's divided into three phases and let's divide the three phases and uh, accordingly we can uh, discuss about it. So we'll start with the phase one, how it's been conducted over there and what it includes. So these phases, phase one, two and three, they are just building blocks. So the phase one 
it's uh, for the year first and the second uh, it's done in the campus itself. The gr uh, groups are divided into two. The students are supposed to study in these both two groups. The one group is called the large one and the small groups. In the large group, it's basically done uh, like team based oriented program with digital learning with 3D radiological imaging and human specimens and anatomical practicals is also included. In small groups, you have to uh, emphasize more on clinical skills and uh, clinical communication as well. So the thing is the group interaction with patients in primary care and in community, uh, it basically builds, you know, the transparency between the patient and the doctor. It gives you a strong hold in communication also. That's why this is a very crucial step in the starting year itself. And it's very good in these universities. You get a clinical hand from the first year itself. It's not like the first year you need to study like one, two, three years for theoretical and then go for clinical over here. Just from the first year itself, you're going to have hands on clinical experience. In, in this phase only, at the end of the year second, the student selected company, the SSC, they undertake uh, a proper program in which the student is supposed to take a project of their own choice to do a research work and they need to submit a paper also. So it will be a great huge uh, boost for your CV as well because they are providing you to keep doing some kind of research in any particular topic you can choose you have an interest in. So that's a great thing. And now let's discuss about the phase two of this program. Now let's discuss about phase two. It's a very crucial year, the third and the fourth year. You're going to have hospital placements and you need to be part of a medical community uh, where you're going to have doctor patient consultation experience. You need to have proper diagnosis abilities and uh, you need to learn how to do disease management. Everything is going to be included in this. You're going to have rotation through six free uh, like week long placements as well. So the third phase, phase three, it's going to be in the last year, the fifth year. Now what uh, it's all about, it's the preparation for practice as a doctor. You need to have uh, like need to give the uh, medical licensing assessment exam. It's going to be undertaken by the SSC uh, and student. They need to undertake a project or spend time on elective uh, overseas. There can be various subjects, various elective courses. You need to select it and ultimately it will uh, cover up the fifth year itself. Hi, welcome to the Eastern Gateway building. This is one of our newest buildings on campus and it's home to the Brunel Business School as well as holding the main reception. So if you're lost or you just need a safe space, this is a great place to come. We also have some bus stations to our left, so it has the U1, 2, 4, and 7. At the Eastern Gateway building, we have our main reception, the Beldum Restaurant, as well as the Starbucks Cafe, as well as an outdoor seating area, and one of our main lecture auditoriums that holds more than 200 plus students. This ISC, our multi-million pound indoor athletic center, which has recently undergone 500,000 pound refurbishment in 2020, which remains our centerpiece of our sports facilities. With 132 meter, six lane sprints and hurdles, long jump, triple jump, jump pit, high jump, pole vault, and a polymetric surface. <sighs> the IAC, has a brand new strength and conditioning area, as well as a designated weightlifting area. It's one of the UK Athletics Regional Performance Centers and is the chosen training area of some of the UK's finest athletes. At the sports center, we have two multi-purpose sports halls that are suitable for basketball, volleyball, futsal, badminton, and many other sports. Both of our sports halls are well equipped and have sprung flooring. We also have multiple squash courts and my personal favorite, a rock climbing wall. There's also a well equipped gym with all of the high quality equipment that you would find in your local gym. There's plenty of opportunities for Brunel students to stay active. Hi guys, welcome to the lecture center. The lecture center is located right in the center of campus. It's also our main teaching hub. Let's go and have a look inside. Most lectures are held here within our six state lecture theaters or in the other smaller range of classrooms, which could be used for seminars or other smaller lectures as well. 
these rooms could also be booked by the students themselves for some society events or any other events in general. Let's go and have a look inside in one of the rooms. This is one of our 60-year lecture theatres with a capacity up to 150 and we also have flat classrooms with a capacity up to 40. The lecture centre is the home for the media teaching centre and also a computer study area on the ground floor. In the middle of our campus, we have the library. We have the computer support team here, which can help you with any computer issues that come up. And we also have the professional development center, which can help you with things like your resume, cover letter, and interview prep. I think they also have books. Shh. In the library, we have various studying areas, ranging from complete silence on the fourth floor to group and social studying areas. We also have bookable rooms where you can work on those group projects, computers, and library support staff. And if you need a coffee while you're studying, luckily 1966 is on the ground floor and connected. So it's nice and easy to have a quick break. The Hamilton Center is the focal point of the student life on campus. It houses the Union Brunel students who run social events and sports clubs and much more. The Hamilton Center holds so much. This includes cost cutter where you can get your groceries. We have venue. This is a great social space that also doubles up as a nightclub. We also have Locos. This is a really fun campus bar where we have events like karaoke every Tuesday. We also have restaurants like Izzy's Pizza and Tortilla and many more. The John Clung Gardens are another social point of Brunel University campus. There are a lot of trees and greenery, uh, so this place is used for a lot of events. And off to the side there's an outdoor gym. The outdoor gym is free to use by all of our students on campus. It's also a great place to stay active if you don't want to join the gym indoors. This is our Izumba social areas. Over here we have our ping pong tables. Our seating areas for students to socialize, and just behind me, we have our Starbucks and cost cutters. This is the accommodation office where students are able to seek support regarding anything accommodation related. So, we already talked about the various phases. Now, let's talk about the assessment of the university how they assess the student, uh, how they conduct exams, and what they want the student to do. So in accordance with the GMC guidelines, they have three basic building blocks to assess a child is the medical knowledge of a student, the clinical practice and professional development of the child. In the medical knowledge, they are mostly assessing by having this single best answer questions uh, and the team based learning. Overall, it will uh, decide this particular thing. And after that, you have the clinical practice and edge you need to have like uh, ob objective structured clinical examinations and uh, work-based assessments. And after that, we have professional development. It's uh, basically assessed by holistic appraisal of student conduct and behavior, taking into consideration the student portfolio, reflect, uh, which, for example, it's giving reflective writing assignments, evaluations, and uh, evidence of professionalism lapses. If at the end of every year, you're going to have one assessment block score that is the 120 credit score which you need to fulfill that will complete your year. The regular evaluation of student progress at the end of each term and every professional theme is also undertaken like every time you need to choose a particular subject and do some kind of research over there, it will also add up in the scores. And based on the performance, there is various competency level. They are divided into CL1, CL2 and CL3. If you are uh, lying on the CL1, you clear the your year, you don't have any issue. If you're in the CL2 list, uh, you need to do something more to prove yourself that you're worthy to be shifted in the next year. And if you're CL CL3 in that, then unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, you need to repeat a year or maybe there are the chances of a student take drop out, they leave the university. So you need to know where you need to belong. Like CL1 CL would be the best option. You need to study hard if you want to be a part of this university. They were strict, very strict with the curriculum. They want uh, one of the top doctors to come out from this university because it's ultimately 
uh, it boosts the university also the ranking also and uh, it uh, gives morale and gives uh, stand out in, as compared to other universities as well so it was a short synapse about medicine in the uk i basically covered all the points all the important points i don't need to explain some things which are like already done by some students over there uh, the basic things that are not been covered in youtube i took the point i took the time to do some research and i put forward towards you like you need to understand this this curriculum it's going to be very strict you need to study a lot not just the money that going to help you over there you need to have a proper scoring because i already explained to you about the cl1 2 and 3 things so you need to have a good score to keep get, going to the next year next year and ultimately all you know it's uk they are meant for medicine all the universities over there are like a very reputed universities with good ranking and they want you to study properly to be a good doctor and have a good residency to take a particular kind of fields or specialization or super specialization it will ultimately boost the university also if you're going to be a part of this place and you're scoring well and showing yourself that you are a worthy doctor so you need to understand that too so i covered all the topic and you if you want more details and you need uh, help in admission and everything you know where to contact to our administrative department everything is ready we are uh, providing all the proper counseling as well so you can connect with me on all the platforms uh, mentioned so i hope you like my content you know what to do just like share and subscribe and i'll keep posting more and more informative videos if you keep supporting me so have a nice day